Hello everybody, my name is Christian Pomerlo and today I will talk to you about the bank rate uh, on this 13th of April 2022. It is the first time that I do it in English. Normally I've been doing this for uh, many years in French, but now I decided to also touch the English market. I am normally in a very nice uh, 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 setup, uh, but now it's very minimal because I'm doing this capsule directly from Vietnam. But the information will all be Canadian and I hope you'll have fun with all this. I want to let you know today that uh, we have a solid change in uh, the uh, basic, the uh, prime rate, not the prime rate, but the, the bank rate, uh, which was announced by the Bank of Canada. And they have increased the bank rate uh, by 0.5%, so that's 50 uh, basis points. So it brings it up right now to 1%. Uh, it's a second successive rate that we have uh, uh, after a very long, uh, almost two year of uh, no changes. So now we're starting in this uh, raising curve. Um, it is the end of the reinvestment of the federal uh, liquidities in the market. And right now we're more uh, going to see a, a seizing of the market and uh, on a quantitative, quantitative way. Uh, now, why this raise? Uh, first of all, it's clear it's to control inflation. Right now, inflation is measured at 5.7. And there's this economist from, from Desjardins, which was uh, um, reviewing a speech given 10 years ago by Mario Draghi, which is a very uh, uh, reputed uh, banker. And he said that sometimes you have to do whatever it takes to solve a situation. And this method has been uh, used uh, many uh, uh, times uh, lately by the central banks. For example, during the major crisis for the pandemic, uh, the central banks, the Federal Reserve, and our Bank of Canada have all done whatever it takes by injecting like colossal, uh, humongous amounts of liquidities in the market just to uh, sustain the economy. And now the panic is a little reversed because these same banks, they are now doing whatever it takes to counter the inflation that re is really galloping right now and raising very uh, rapidly, too rapidly. So we have to think about multiple raises of the bank rates uh, in the next uh, uh, months and uh, uh, many in 2022 and probably some in 2023 also. Now, if we look in the, in the whole world, the perspective of having uh, um, something come out of the conflict in Ukraine are getting uh, very uh, weaker and right now it's not being solved at all. So this has a major impact on the raw material prices and definitely petroleum and the zone euro countries suffer more and more and many different countries uh, which, uh, which uh, rely a lot on uh, importing uh, raw material like Japan, India and China are having like very uh, rough uh, uh, consequences of all this. And right now, even China is trying to get up from a very bad real estate uh, crisis and also the COVID crisis where they're trying to have a major uh, control. They're, they're having a hard time with that. So this has an impact on the whole world. If we look at our neighbors in the States, the last monetary uh, policy reunion and, um, uh, and the major bankers have clearly established that there is a plan put in place to have multiple raises of the bank rates and the Fed rate in 2022. And rapidly, uh, we saw that the bonds started to go up and the share market has been affected affected negatively um, and also in the like I said the, the war in Ukraine also sustains this pessimism in the uh, with the investors so confidence is something that's very important in the market however even in the states the employment market goes very well even the American companies have to increase the salaries of people to maintain and to attract uh, but at the same time this is like a catch-22 because 
raises and having high salaries stimulates consumption and economy and creates even more inflation. So this is the challenge. And one of the measures uh, that was taken by the uh, American last week is to unblock one third of the strategic uh, petroleum reserve uh, that they keep aside, you know, for their major uh, things. And now they took one third and unblocked that uh, to basically uh, mitigate the inflation through the canal of the energy prices. And uh, also all the what is the war is creating as a problem uh, to import raw material and petroleum material is having a major, major um, uh, impact on the countries of the OPEP, which have a high difficulty to react to all this. Biden also thinks about taking away some sanctions from the very hostile regime of Venezuela, just in exchange of having provisions of petroleum come in. So this is what we, we mean by whatever it takes. Now here in Canada, the big news last week uh, was um, the new uh, federal budget for 2022 uh, that was given by the uh, finance minister, Christian Freeland. And this budget uh, shows the reduction, an important redu reduction in the uh, federal deficit for the next five to six years. Um, now, how they do this is because there will be a pretty good increase in governmental revenues and also a weak progression of the expenses. And this explains the, the relatively positive perspective. Um, in our country also, hiring uh, is very solid and the unemployment rate is now established around 5.3. It has never been so low in the last 40 years, which is a good thing. And the commerce, uh, commercial market is going very well. Uh, exports are strong, imports are very good. Um, even though the pandemia still has a uh, little wave there, uh, hospitalizations have increased, uh, but there's no new restrictions that are going to be put in place. So the population and the economy is pretty resilient right now with all the situation. So I think we're surfing the wave right now. Um, the economists of the National Bank have said that the growth uh, estimated for Canada in 2022 will be around 3.6. Uh, the Bank of Canada talked about uh, an economical market which will roll at 4.25% in 2022 and probably slow down a bit in 2023. Uh, the impact of the rate raise uh, should be pretty well absorbed by Canadians because we have uh, important savings aside, we have a very strong employment market and there has been good solid raises in salary also. Now if we look into the real estate market, uh, we know that the any monetary policy which becomes severe against inflation and uses a plan of successive rate raises will definitely have an impact on the real estate market and a lot of economists um, estimate that there will there could be a reduction in the value of the assets and possibly uh, market um, slowdown. Uh, now borrowing, the cost of borrowing right now in the real estate market and the residential real estate market is now back to its level that it was in 2010. And the Bank of Canada will definitely look at this market very closely because all this excitement that we had in the two last years in the real estate market has incredibly increased the debt of the families. And this market is very sensitive uh, in, uh, with the fluctuations of bank rates. Uh, according to the National Bank, a, uh, a, a bank rate the prime, prime bank rate of about 2% would probably be good enough to calm the market, but maintain it pretty healthy. So that's what they think should be the, uh, the uh, bank rate. 
Uh, it's possible that we don't see a big movement with the CMBs or the Canadian mortgage bonds. Uh, we're going to see this, but they have been reacting uh, a lot in the last three, four weeks. Uh, and this is a base rate which is used for the cost of funds of many lenders uh, in the uh, multi-residential insured market. Uh, but because there has been a lot of movement there already, a lot of raise, maybe we won't see much of a movement in the next days we'll see in the future. Many factors are going are gonna to be in the balance, uh, the confidence uh, of the uh, consumers, uh, the balance between offer and demand demand and a lot of stuff also i hope this little video capsule uh that you liked it do not hesitate to contact me uh, if you want to talk about financial uh, um, uh, commercial financing or multi-residential financing or the new mli select program for construction or uh, regular buildings i can be uh, joined by uh, email at christian point pomerlo at pmml.ca and for those that may be interested uh, my sources to do this capsule come from uh, the Desjardins uh, economical studies and also the Bank of Canada site uh, on their communique and also the economical uh, monthly um, uh, provisions from the National Bank so again I'm Christian Pomerlo very happy to do this and have a great week